With Microsoft PowerPoint 2013, there are several ways to get around our PowerPoint. Three ways can be hyperlinks, action links, and action buttons. Hyperlinks you're probably very familiar with are links of either text or something that you click on and you jump to something else. We can jump to a place in our PowerPoint or we can open up a file or we can even start an email or we can even go to a place on the web. An action link is something that happens when you click on an item on your uh, PowerPoint, for example, or if I mouse over it. So for example, this blue box of action settings has an action link on it to make a sound when I hover over it or go over it. So when I move my mouse, it highlights it, it puts this nice little box around it and does a chime sound. That's an action link. And then action buttons look like navigational buttons as in left, right, stop, help. Uh, those are action buttons. It used to be in the past that we would have to create those our own, on our own, but now they're included in 2013 and are very easy to use. Let's see some of these in action and build a few. So we have our working document and I want to build a few hyperlinks. The first one I'm going to build is a, I guess a traditional hyperlink where it goes out to the web. So right down here I have the title of Horn Blower Harbor Cruises, which that's the, har the cruise that I took in the San Diego Harbor for these pictures. I'm going to go ahead and just highlight the text and to insert the hyperlink we're going to go to the insert tab in the links group click on hyperlink text to display will be whatever I've highlighted so if I want to change this I can change it here but it will change on the slide itself we can add a screen tip so basically what a screen tip is is once you hover over this link it's going to give some tip to the user uh, click to open the web page perhaps and then it needs an address it needs to go to the place so www.hornblower.com is the main website so I'm gonna go ahead and put in that you'll notice that it does put in the HTTP so I don't have to do that but the www the rest of the address I do need to put that in and I say okay and now I'm going to test it out. You can't test it out in this view, but to, to test it out I'm going to go to the slideshow view and you'll see when I hover over it it says click to open to web page. I click on it and indeed it opens up my browser and it goes to that website. So that's a traditional PowerPoint uh, or hyperlink that it goes to a place on the web. Let's see something else in action. So I'm going to go ahead back to my PowerPoint slides, get out of the slideshow view by hitting escape. And let's say I want to go to another document. So I'm going to click on this picture. It doesn't have to be text. It can be a picture or something else. As long as I can click on it and click on hyperlink, then you're good to go. So again, I'm on the insert tab in the links group hyperlink icon and I can say existing file and I actually have a file that's named blank document so I'm gonna go ahead and click on blank document keep in mind that where you need to be able to get to the place that that file is stored whether it's another PowerPoint whether it's a Word document like I'm click like I'm linking it to or it's somewhere else uh, you need to be able to get to that place. It'd be great if it's out there on the web, but then that's just a web link. I'm going to go ahead and do a screen tip. Opens a Word doc, perhaps. You don't always have to have a screen tip, but I do like to have one there just to remember what things are. And I say OK. Again, let's go to slideshow view. If I hover over this, it's uh, this link, it says click to open the web page, and if I hover over the picture, it says opens a Word doc. So let's test it. And here's my Word document that I created, which is just a blank document, kind of, sort of. 
but that's okay. It could have been any document. It could have been a chart in Excel. It could have been a PowerPoint. It could have been a picture, another picture. It could have been anything uh, as long as you can open it. Again, let me go back to my slideshow. Get out of my slideshow. And go back to my regular file. And let me show you one more type of hyperlink. Perhaps I want on each of the slides that if I click on Harbor, it's going to go back to the first slide. So all I need to do is highlight whatever text. If I need to create text, I can create a text box and perhaps say go to slide one. I'm going to highlight the text of slide one. Go back over to insert in the links group, hyperlink, place in this document. I can even say where I want it to go to. So I click on whatever link slide I want and I say OK. Now when I click on this slide one, it's going to jump to the title slide. Let's do one more thing. Right on this picture, on the right hand picture, I'm going to create a hyperlink to a new document. So in, in insert links, hyperlink, create a new document. Name of the new document, so I'm just going to say uh, PPTX document. And I, that's the full path. I'm fine with that. And I'm going to say OK. And I can say edit new document now or edit new document later. So perhaps every time I click on something, I want a new document to be created. I say OK. And bingo, it opens up a new PowerPoint to add my first slide. Why is that useful? Perhaps you're in a situation where you want a quick link when you're in one PowerPoint to be able to create a new PowerPoint. So that's the usefulness of that type of link. And lastly, I just want to show you what else we can do. We can create an email address. So instead of I'm going to edit this hyperlink, so I right click on it, edit hyperlink. Perhaps I don't want it to go to slide one. Perhaps I want it to email somebody. So then I just put in their email address. Uh, we'll just say and maybe a subject of new email. I don't know. And then whatever, if you had recently used addresses, would be down here. You say OK. Now, let's check it out. If I click on that, it's going to open up one of my emails. Uh, let's just do Outlook. And it does open it up and starts a new email and addresses it to the person that that goes to. So that would be helpful if it was a contact somebody at this email address. Uh, that would be very useful to have in a PowerPoint. So I'm going to go ahead and say no and go back. <clears throat> to our document. But again, perhaps I don't want this slide one to open an email. So I'm going to go ahead and right click on it, edit the hyperlink, go back to place in this document on the first page and say OK. And I just want to test to make sure that that's doing what I want it to do. So in slideshow view, click on slide one and it goes back to slide one. Now let's talk about action links. Action links, I'm on the third slide now, action links allow us to apply an action to an object on our slide, whether it's text, a picture, a graphic, something. As long as we have it highlighted, right now I have nothing clicked on, nothing highlighted, so you'll see that my action is grayed out. I am on the insert tab and the action is grayed out, but as soon as I click on something, you'll see that action is no longer grayed out and I get to click on it and see what I want it to do. So on a mouse click I can hyperlink to something 
maybe it's the next slide, I can run a program, perhaps I have an executable program as in a game, uh, and a maybe I want it to open up some whatever program. I can play a sound, that's what I did in the demonstration, so I can play a sound, maybe a laser, and I can actually highlight it when I click on it. So if I want it to just hover over, I'm going to say none on the click perhaps, but maybe I just want to mouse over it and play a sound, and you've got lots of sound, other sounds could be actually a song. Uh, but I'm just going to do one of the built-in sounds, hopefully you'll be able to hear it, and I want to highlight it when I mouse over it. This is what it means by highlighting. I won't do the highlight now. Let's go ahead and try it. And as soon as I mouse over it, it does that silly laser sound. So perhaps I have a, a picture of something that I want that sound to apply to. And let's change that action to highlight when the mouse is over. So to get back to this action setting, I selected the, I the item that I have the action set to. Click on highlight when mouse over. Now you'll see that a box shows up around the picture. So it indicates what object has that action to it. Let's change the action and instead of a mouse click, let's say run a program. So I'm going to go ahead and just connect this to my Windows Media Player and say OK. So I just find whatever program I want it to, to be connected to and let's test it out. So as soon as I click on this, it opens up my media player. So perhaps I want to open up some sounds, some songs, whatever it may be. Now I have that capability of doing that from a program. Perhaps I just open up a game and I have perhaps links over here saying, hey, go to a game, go to this. So those are action links. It will do something, play a song, play whatever if I hover or click on it. Now, let's see action buttons. Action buttons are slightly different. They're actually on insert, in shapes, at the very bottom you'll see action buttons. So I'm just going to click on one of them and I'm going to make a button. And immediately it says on click, on click hyperlink to previous slide. Great, that's exactly what I want it to do. Perhaps I want to play a sound when it does it. I have that option. Uh, a click sound maybe say OK. And perhaps I want another action button. To the next slide. Now here's why it's very easy to build these to where it's almost like building a self-running kiosk type of uh, PowerPoint. The user knows exactly what these kind of do. A hyperlink, it will go to previous slide, next slide, it's usually like a play button. And that works really well. But what if, what the good thing is about these action buttons is they look like a cool button. So perhaps this is just a play button and I want to run a program or run a macro or even something else, I can do that directly from this one button. Now let's test them out. That's previous slide. That's the next slide. And you can see if I wanted these on every single slide, uh, it would be very easy to now copy and paste those. And no, they're not the right size or anything like that, but I'm going to highlight it. Copy, paste, paste, paste. And now all of those slides very easily have navigational buttons for the user to use and they pretty much know exactly what they are. I can move these around, perhaps I want it over here. But you can see they're very easy to build. Here's another little icon that I like. So shapes, 
down here you have all different kinds so you have uh, the beginning this immediately goes to the end this one goes home here's an information action button and you have to tell it where to go so perhaps there's a document that opens up for an information item so you can just hyperlink to uh, a URL or another file here's another button that's very interesting so if I want to open up a document play a sound a help which again you have to tell it where to go for help and even a blank action button that again gives you these nice really quick settings that are built in it used to be you had to build these long long time ago like in in PowerPoint 2000 you had to build these all by yourself now they're very quick to and easy to use perhaps you wanted the information item to even be a mouse over where it opens a text box or something right on your screen you can do that by hyperlinking it to a document and it will open up that document so these are very helpful items to use and if you want to get rid of it all you have to do is highlight it and say delete let's recap what we did in this section we created hyperlinks to navigate through our presentation like to jump to slide one we also created a hyperlink uh, to go to the internet to a specific specific site we also use the hyperlink attached to that picture to open up another file and we also created a hyperlink to open up our email if we designated address to someone in particular we were able to create action links to complete actions like when we hovered over one of our objects it made a noise we could also attach it to a file and we used our action buttons to do something like go to the previous slide and go to the next slide